How is the power misused and abused? Well, to start with our warp perspectives, where the president appoints based on personal loyalty rather than qualifications, appoints as part of the political spoils instead of looking at competence, looks at appointments as a reward and sometimes as a bribe, and therefore looks at the people being appointed as people who can be controlled over and above public service. When the process of appointments is viewed by our leaders as a transactional sort of thing, you know that the entire process is going to go wrong. But specifically, how does it go wrong? At interim appointments, the exception supposedly is now the rule. It is a failed check to look at the Commission on Appointments because the Commission on Appointments has no real rules. To start with, uh, you, even if you never complete submitting your papers to the Commission on Appointments, you can continue being issued ad interim appointments. When you complete your papers, the Commission can just bypass you and bypass and bypass without an, even a single meeting. And so, uh, it becomes a process where people negotiate for things and if you don't give in to the members of the Commission on Appointments, they make things very difficult for you. More importantly are the third level appointments. If you remember the third slide, there is a one point something percent in the career bureaucracy called the third level. There are actually no checks. There are wishy-washy qualification standards. Right now, there is an eligibility examination. Uh, civil service eligibility is the standard upon which people uh, are gauged as to whether you are capable of being the first, the second, or the third. In the first and second levels, all of that has oversight by the CSC. And therefore, the level of qualifications are followed to the letter. But in the third level, we will find that more than 55.67% of the people who occupy positions of director up to undersecretary are not eligible. Some of these people could not even pass. Others couldn't care less because after all, they are appointed by the president. And the effect of this is undermining professionalization because it is the third level that serves as the model of the entire career bureaucracy. It is the third level that is supposed to be the repository of expertise. And when your third level is totally politicized, when people know that they can only go up kung malakas sila, then from the time they are going up in the career path of the bureaucracy, they learn to kowtow, they learn to say yes, they learn to be timid, they learn to stop thinking. In addition to that, you find that over and above the laws and the plantilla positions that you find in the budget, in this administration, there are excess you sex and ASEX. Excess, by the time I left in, in 2008, there were 81 that I could count. Excess. Okay? Ang ibig sabihin yan, on the average, you have three you sex and three ASEX by law. There are only 20 something uh, line agencies, but there were 81 ASEX and you sex. Uh, many of them, about 30 plus, you find in Malacanang, occupying various positions. Like you have two presidential assistants with the rank of secretary for education. Plus you have a secretary of education and ginawaring cabinet member yung testa, ginawaring cabinet member yung ched. Hindi mo na ngayon alam kung who is calling what shots. It undermines the career paths and puts people, non-career people, above 
people who have spent their entire lives in the bureaucracy. In addition to that, you have appointments in an acting capacity. This sounds innocuous. In actual fact, this administration has perfected the acting capacity business. Whether in GOCCs, in the Board of Regents of UP, in, the, uh, in NAPSI, everywhere, you find people appointed in an acting capacity. What does that mean? Most of these positions are positions that carry terms, okay? When you are appointed as a member of the board of GSIS, for example, or as a member of the board of regents of UP, or as a member of the National Anti-Poverty Commission, you carry a term, and that term is supposed to keep some level of autonomy so that you can make the best judgment possible. But when you are appointed in an acting capacity, you do not follow the orders you are removed. I'll give you an example close to home. In the Career Executive Service Board, the board that is in charge of the third level of the government, we came out with a memorandum telling the president very nicely, these are the violations that we find in the third level. These are our recommendations, very nicely, very jargony, bureaucraties, and everything else. Before it arrived in Malacanang, the news had leaked. And except for two of us, everybody was removed. Six members of the board were summarily removed because they were in an acting capacity. And they were replaced by new people again in an acting capacity, which meant you toe the line or you're out. Today, our bigger problem is the midnight conversion of many of those appointed in an acting capacity into permanent positions with terms which will now take effect even after June 2010.